Watch what happens this time when the counselor keeps the conversation focused on the student's own goals and values, encouraging her to think about what behaviors fit best with her own plans for the future. Hi, Andrea. Thanks Hi. for coming in. Thank you. So I don't know how much you know already about sort of my role here and why you're even here. So I thought I'd start by telling you a little bit about myself, basically. Okay. My job is to meet with all of the students. I meet with everybody about once or twice a semester and just talk with you a little bit about how things are going, different behaviors that you might be engaging in, and thinking about any changes you might want to make for your life if you decide that you do. It's not my job to change you. I couldn't even if I wanted to. That's not my role at all. It's really to help you think about you know, how things are going for you and how you might like making changes or moving forward. Does that okay. sound okay? Yeah. All right, so why don't we start by you telling me a little bit about yourself. Sure. Um, as you know, I'm Andrea. I, uh, I'm a junior. I'm in the marching band. I play the tenor sax. Oh, neat. Yeah, I'm also in the, I'm a little bit of a band geek. <laughs> I play, you know, in the wind ensemble and the jazz band, things like that. Wow, you really are involved in music. Yeah. <laughs> when did you start? Uh, I started playing about 10 years ago, actually. Wow. Yeah, I started on the violin first, and then I went on, explored a little with the piano, clarinet, finally found the tenor sax, and yeah. Very <laughs> cool. I've always wanted to be good at music. It's... <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it sounds like you're in band and a, a few other musical ensembles. Yeah. Any other hobbies you have or things you like to do for fun? Um, you know, just hanging out with my friends or go to the beach, things like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just kind of everyday sort of stuff. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about your family. Uh, well, I have one older brother. He's about eight and a half old, years older than me. Mm -hmm. My parents and I have a dog. <laughs> Cute. What yeah. kind of dog? He's a golden retriever. Oh, nice. Okay. My big boy. <laughs> Very fun. All right. And how are things going in school for you? They're pretty good. Grades have been pretty all right. Still like 3.7-ish. Okay, great. So you're doing well. What sorts of goals do you have for after college or after high school? <laughs> uh, I'd like to, you know, I'd like to, of course, graduate high school, hopefully go to a nice Ivy League school. But oh, all right. I mean, that might not happen. And then I'd like to go on and become a doctor, study psychology, maybe become a psychiatrist or something. Okay, you have some pretty big dreams. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. That's it really exciting to think about that and yeah. sort of be looking forward to the future and those things. All right, well, one thing I'm going to ask you about is, um, you know, different people have sort of different things that they really value in their life, whether it's, you know, their cultural identity or their family or their friends or job or hobbies, things like that. So here's a little sheet that goes through just some basic values that um, might be more or less important to certain people, like mm -hmm. belonging or sense of community, again, cultural identity or family, friendship, modesty, religion, respect, self-determination, and spirituality. So when you think about yourself, which of these are kind of most important to you in terms of your life? Um, I think a sense of community and belonging. Okay. I think those two. And... Um, Respect. Respect. Okay. Can you tell me a little bit about why you picked those three? Yeah, well, I picked community and belonging. I kind of related them. Um, you know how I said I was in the marching band? Mm -hmm. I really, you know, I really enjoy being in, like, that team setting of, you know, being with other people and all working toward, together towards that one goal. Mm -hmm. And then in terms of respect, I, I kind of view that as one of, like, my major like rules like I, I really do think respect is important to respect myself or respect those around me so okay I place great importance in that okay great so sort of being a part of a group and being a part of a team gives you a sense of um a belonging like mm -hmm. you said and sort of a, a sense of purpose in yes, a way purpose. and then the respect is really sort of all-encompassing yes. not just authority but respecting yourself respecting your teammates or your bandmates and other people around you. Definitely, okay, that's definitely. great. All right, well, um, one of the things I wanted to talk to you about sort of relates to belonging and, and your friends. So what kinds of things do you like to do when you get together with your friends? Um, sometimes we just, you know, go to the movies, go to the beach, like I had said, or sometimes we just get together at someone's house, play some board games, and hang out. Mm -hmm. And when you're hanging out with friends, is there ever alcohol involved? 
Yeah, sometimes. Okay. Can you tell me a little bit about how alcohol fits into sort of your social scene? Uh, well, it's mostly just for for parties or party settings. It's kind of to get things going and mm -hmm. get everyone loosened up, mm -hmm. as they say. Mm -hmm. And so when you go to parties, most of the time there's alcohol there. Yeah. Okay. And how often do you think you would say you're drinking? I'd say um, on a not busy month, for instance, I'd say about like two weekends out of the month, two or three. Mm -hmm. So about half the time you're yeah. drinking and half the time you're not. Yeah. Can you tell me what's different about the days when you choose to drink versus not to drink? The days that we drink are mostly, like I said, there are parties. So it's more of that whole partying and dancing and you know, having everyone have fun. And mm -hmm. then when we don't, it's a lot more relaxed. It's a lot more hanging out, playing board games, watching mm -hmm. a movie. It's not, yeah. So it really depends on what the activity is, whether yeah. or not alcohol is going to be there. Okay. And do you notice a big difference or can you tell me about the difference in your enjoyment level at, say, a party versus the night you're playing board games? Um, I think of them as, as different. I think, you know, night in playing board games and things it's meant to be relaxing mm -hmm. so it's nice to have like that kind of breather uh -huh. versus with a party it's a lot more energetic it's a after it all it's very draining mm -hmm. but in the moment it's quite fun to dance and have fun and okay so there's sort of pros and cons on both yeah. sides okay what are the things that you like about drinking or like about alcohol um it's you know when we drink we we tend to have more fun because i guess we're not you know, everyone's drinking together. We're a lot more loosened up and relaxed mm -hmm. and not really thinking about stresses or things like that. But it can be, when it's too much drinking, it can be, can be obviously bad. Okay. Yeah. So sort of in the, the too much drinking or, or times, can you tell me some of the less good things or not so good things about alcohol? Um, a lot of times it'll make just, I'll make people stupid. <laughs> yeah, you know, people make dumb decisions and things like that. We we usually try to be as safe about it as mm -hmm. possible. So we'll like sleep over a friend's house and so I, you know, we're not driving and it's mostly within our friend group, so we're not worried about strangers putting mm -hmm. weird things in our drinks. Mm -hmm. But um definitely some of the ideas people can have when they're stupid when they're drunk can can be really stupid. Mm -hmm. So you're trying to, like you said, not engage in really dangerous activities. Yeah. You're trying to stay put. You're not driving. You're trying to stay with people that you trust. Yeah. Um, but yet, yeah, it sounds like there's still some some things happening from Sometimes, time to time. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Well, I especially don't like it whenever me or one of my friends like we drink too much and we mm -hmm. end up like throwing up or mm -hmm. things like that. That I don't. That's not fun. Yeah. Growing up is never fun. It's not. <laughs> and how often do you think that happens? For me, that's happened to me once. It was the first time I ever drank, and it was it was a lot. I mm -hmm. didn't know what I was doing. I was mixing all kinds of weird things and just kind of taking anything every, anyone gave me. Mm -hmm. and that didn't end well. Mm -hmm. But after that, I haven't. But I do have friends that, that still do sometimes, so I'll end up like having to take care of them or something. And okay. It kind of puts a downer on my, on my fun. Uh-huh. Okay, so on the one side, some of the fun things associated with alcohol are people are just more relaxed, mm -hmm. sort of um, carefree, can yeah. kind of let loose a little bit more. But on the other hand, there's a little bit more, I guess, planning involved because yeah. you have to make sure that you're doing it safely or as safe as you can. And then um, there can be some other consequences like throwing up or even if it's not you mm -hmm. that sometimes you're stuck, your, your fun is sort of ruined when you're stuck dealing with a friend yeah. who drank too much. Okay, any other not so good things about the alcohol? Yeah, people can get a little like sloppy, I mm -hmm. guess. Like they're all loose, like with people in corners uh -huh. doing things that should be done in private mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff. So you're kind of stuck being exposed to things yeah. you don't need to see. <laughs> yeah. Got it. Okay. Um, all right. Well, you mentioned a couple times that you've made a few decisions to try and limit the, yeah. the dangerous aspect of the drinking. Why did you make those decisions? I just, I, you know, I have an aunt who is an alcoholic, so I, I see 
like the issues that are involved and mm-hmm. you know, obviously movies and things I know that drunk driving is an issue mm-hmm. so I you know I want to be as safe as possible in those terms and be in a setting where like we can let loose but still be safe like at someone's house or someone's mm-hmm. parents home or something but so I like I know that there are dangers involved and I guess I want to limit that mm-hmm. and still be able to have fun okay it, it sounds kind of similar to your um, your value of respect too. Yeah. So on the one hand, you, the drinking maybe helps with the belonging community to start. Mm-hmm. If there's too much, then, then it, it sort it of, of defeats the purpose. Right. <laughs> and then with the respect, one of the things you mentioned is really wanting to respect yourself and not sort of cross boundaries, not sort of cross yeah. lines. Um, how do you think that the drinking fits in with that? In terms of what? In terms of respect? Mm-hmm. I think, well, in a way, I do think that drinking is probably a form of disrespect to my own body because I'm not putting things, I'm putting things in it that shouldn't be there. Okay. And then, but in terms of at how ways I am respecting myself, I am I'm respecting myself by, like, trying to stay in someone's house and, like, mm-hmm. trying to limit my drinking so I don't get to that blacked out, like, throwing up and everything mm-hmm. and try to you know let loose but still be in control of my behavior so I'm not gonna go with some random person I met Mm -hmm. into I don't know where to do I don't know what Mm -hmm. and things like that okay so you're sort of looking for that balance yeah of how much you can drink to have some of the positive benefit but not cross over okay and what have you come up with at this point? Do you have sort of a, a limit that you stick to? or I you... usually, well, f- I start off by make sure that I make my own drink so I know what's in it and how much is in it. Mm-hmm. So that way I control how much I drink. So I'll usually just, you know, get one of those cups and then make one drink. And then I'll try to make it last as long as possible. And I'll be like, all right, this is my one drink. And I'm good. And that way, I still have something in my cup. Mm-hmm. So people aren't going to be like, oh, here, have some more. Right. I'll be like, no, I'm good. I have mine. And I'll still be, you know, having some to, like, let loose a little. Mm-hmm. Okay. So. And do you feel that like that's working pretty well for you? Or do you sometimes exceed that limit? Or, or what do you think? For the most part, it works pretty well. Because, like I said, people, you know, if people come asking me, trying to pressure me, I'll be like, no, I'm good. I have, you know, I still have some, like. I'll get some later and then never end up getting anything. Mm-hmm. Well, but sometimes they'll be like, hey, let's take a shot. And everyone's gathered around like the kitchen or something mm-hmm. ready to take a shot. And then at that point, I'll be like, oh, well, maybe I can take one more. And that's when I start, you know, falling into okay. the too much. So a, a portion of the time it's working well for you and another portion of the time maybe you could yeah, like, you'd could like to make some adjustments mm-hmm. to, to make it a little smoother. Okay, so kind of thinking along those lines, how important is it to you to make some changes or make some adjustments to your drinking to sort of fit with your values and your goals for yourself? Um, I'd like to make sure that I, you know, in terms of respecting myself and my body, I'd like to, you know, try to drink less. Okay. Like, I, it, you know, it is nice to let loose and have fun, but I'd also like it to be so, you know, I'm not damaging my body and right. I'm... Like, my liver doesn't work by the time I'm, like, 22. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, have my friends on board with a similar mentality so we can kind of work at it together as a group, as a a community. Uh Uh-huh. So kind of combining those goals. Okay. So you have a goal, it sounds like, of actually cutting back on your drinking. Mm -hmm. How important is it to you to work on that goal on on a scale of 1 to 10, where 1 is not at all important and 10 is it's the most important thing right now? I'd say about like, like a six or a seven. Oh, like okay. I'd like to work on it, but you know, if I get around to it, I get around to it. If I don't, I don't. Uh huh. Well, why'd you say six or seven rather than like a four? Um, because I still think it's it's important. Uh huh. I still, you know, like I said, I don't want my body to, especially going to med school. Like I know how things affect your body mm-hmm. and also affect your your social and your schoolwork mm-hmm. and things like that. I know that. Once I get to college, it's not, it's not gonna gonna work out. Being you know drinking every weekend and then like trying to so wake up early and go to school, take an exam. Like I know that's not that's not feasible. It's not a good idea. Yeah, looking ahead, you can't keep drinking this way and reach the goals that you have for yeah. yourself. Okay, 
Well, how confident are you that you could cut down if you wanted to? I think on that same scale from one to ten. I think if I made the decision I was going to for sure, then I think definitely like a ten. I know I'd be. Oh wow. Okay. Why'd you say ten? It's just because I know that once I make the decision, I know I can do it. Uh It's making the decision in the first place. Okay. Whether. Okay. And so you mentioned, you know, quite a few reasons why you would like to cut down. Um, Have you thought at all about how you might go about doing that? Um, I'm thinking of maybe, like, trying to convince my friends without sounding, you know, dorky or something. Mm -hmm. Be like, hey, you know, let's just stay in today. Like, let's not go out or something. Or just be like, hey, I'm not, like... I'm not going to drink today. Mm -hmm. And even if my friends do, like being okay with them drinking around me and Mm -hmm. not doing it and then them being okay with me drinking, me not drinking and them doing whatever they want. So sort of um, trying to plan more activities that don't involve alcohol and then also trying to participate in activities without drinking yourself or Mm -hmm. maybe even drinking less than you're drinking now. Okay. Does that sound like a goal you want to work on now or? I think so. I think it's it's very feasible I think it's possible okay um, so I guess we'll talk about um, less alcohol activities I'm just making some notes to myself and then maybe um, reducing the amount of drinking that you're doing if alcohol is involved okay um, so that's that goal sounds feasible you said mm-hmm. would it be okay if we met in a couple weeks to sort of see how it's going I think so. I think that's good. Does that sound like something you'd like to do? Yeah. Okay. Well, I really appreciate you spending the time talking to me. You know, it sounds like you have a lot of really good goals for yourself, really ambitious goals of going to medical school and, you know, becoming a psychiatrist or um, some some other form of physician. Um, You're really looking forward to doing well in school so you can get there. And it sounds like you have a pretty active social life and a, a lot of friends who you feel probably would be uh, supportive even if you cut down on alcohol and that you know there's a lot of benefits you see both to your body and your health um, your school performance and even some of the social stuff in terms of feeling a sense of belonging without having to deal with some of the gross consequences of of, um, drinking too much Um, so yeah you know it really sounds to me like you have a good plan in place and As long as you're willing and and interested in meeting again, I'd be very excited to be able to talk with you about how it's going. Yeah, I'd like to. All right, great. So I'll I'll plan to see you then in a few more weeks. Perfect. Thanks. Great. This time, the counselor began by setting the agenda and emphasizing the student's autonomy right away. She used open questions and reflections to build rapport, then turned to a focus on Andrea's values in order to deepen the connection. This led easily into a discussion of Andrea's social life and an open question about the role that alcohol plays in it. Skillful use of reflections guided the conversation while encouraging the student to open up to the counselor. By using a decisional balance, the counselor was able to assess barriers to change as well as to elicit reasons for change and opportunities to affirm Andrea's good decisions. She was then able to ask Andrea to expand on her reasons for setting limits with her drinking, which highlighted some of the consequences of alcohol use without using lectures or scolding the student. The counselor also tied the drinking behavior to Andrea's values, helping to develop a discrepancy between her personal goals and actions. This set the stage for clarification of goals and beginning discussion of a change plan. However, the counselor encouraged the student to choose her own behavior change goal in order to ensure it was something Andrea felt confident she could achieve. She ended the session with a summary of their discussion, expressed appreciation for Andrea's participation, and communicated optimism about the plan and her desire to continue working with her in the future.